This is a guide on how to play all three Time Splitters games using a keyboard and mouse on your PC. I've been meaning to go back and play Time Splitters for a really long time, and honestly, I thought that by now we would have an official release of the game, so I've kind of just been waiting on that. Especially after what happened with Perfect Dark, I assumed that the next game would have just been Time Splitters, and the years have been going past, and we've been getting nothing. Other than some news that THQ bought the rights to one of the Time Splitters games, or maybe all, I'm not exactly sure. So hopefully they do something meaningful with that and they don't just exploit it for something. But recently, Carnivorous has released a mouse injector for all three of the versions of the game. If some of you might remember Carnivorous, I made some videos on a mouse injector for uh, Goldeneye and Perfect Dark. Carnivorous was behind a very good mouse injector for them, um, really good work and version, so I was really excited to see that he has done the same thing for the Time Splitter series. And it now gives me a more user-friendly way of going back and playing the game, and it's going to be easy for me now to, to um, go back and relive this classic game. And I thought I would share it with you guys as well. So. What you want to do is go to this website. I'll give you a link to this in the description, but it's shootersforever.com. Carnivorous has posted up two links. Um, because Time Splitters 1 was on the PlayStation 2, there's a PlayStation 2 emulator. Um, 2 and 3 were also on the PlayStation 2, but the emulation was is much better for Dolphin. Pretty much best emulator for that generation of consoles because the Xbox, original Xbox, doesn't have an emulator and uh, Dolphin just like can you can get some really good um, graphics on there. So you want to go ahead and download those files linked here. I might not read the thread as well if you want to get more information about these files. I should point out one thing before I move on and there's a bit of an elephant in the room when it comes to mouse injectors in general. This problem happened, uh, I, I went over this problem in, in my GoldenEye video uh, and basically a mouse injector will give your virus detector um, or your virus, any virus software, it'll give a false positive and what that means is that it, it will read this mouse injector and say that it's a virus when it's not. Basically what it thinks it is is a keylogger uh, key loggers are very dangerous things. You don't want them on your machine, especially if you know someone has access to that. They can people can steal your passwords through um, the keystrokes. Anything you type in is recorded, and then they can use that information to generate your passwords and things like that. And a mouse injector is, in a sense, a key logger in that it's logging the movements and tracking the movements of your mouse in order to er, it relays that information into the game that you're playing. And that's hence the false positive. But I trust Carnivorous, he's worked on other projects and um, they all were great, I played them, never had a problem and I've been using this for a little while and haven't had a problem with this so far. So, um, but yeah, I'm just pretty much use at your own caution and all that stuff and just uh, want to warn you guys and um, don't download it if you're in any way um, worried that it might be a problem but you can take it from me that I haven't had any problems yet. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start up the uh, the first. Let's say, let's start with Time Splitters One, and this is the PlayStation uh, Two emulator. What you'll get is this little file here. Uh, go ahead and extract that. You'll also need a, f a copy of the game. Um, you can just get a copy and put it in your disc tra tray and then play it like that, or you can get a um, digital file version of it. So once you've extracted the emulator, what you'll have is something like this, and you'll have to uh, install it. Just hit next, and you have to go to this um, lily pad bit, and then put in mouse injector, and then hit next. Here, the mouse injector actually just pops up automatically, and we'll talk about that in a little bit in a little minute. But oh, I've lost everything. Hold on. But you'll also need your uh, BIOS. Um, basically, legally speaking, you should be getting the BIOS from your actual, like it says here, um, 
This emulator requires a legal copy of the PlayStation 2 BIOS in order to run these games. You must dump the BIOS from your own PlayStation 2. So you'll uh, you can find BIOS online as well if you don't know how to do that. Um, I've got some here. I've got a little BIOS folder because I've emulated PlayStation before, so I just have always kept these files. Uh, let's see, put them in here. I'm gonna just copy the BIOS into the folder and then into the BIOS folder and then just refresh the list. I just generally use the US version because it's a US version of Time Splitters 1 that you need. Hit finish. So the first thing I want to do, that this is the this black bit here is the mouse injector in it, right? There's some readme stuff. Um feel free to read through that. I'm just gonna go ahead and press control and zero to confirm that I have read it, which I didn't even read, but don't really need to. All you need to do all you need to know is that if you press four, it turns the mouse injector on and off in game. And the one other thing I want to do before you load this up is go to your controllers, go to plugin settings, and go to load bindings, and then load up your time splitters one lily um, pad folder. This I think Carnivorous has went to the trouble of actually setting this up for us. So go ahead and load that up, and you don't have to worry about any other controller settings. And let's find the game. We'll run a fast version of it. Let's the point in having the title screen and stuff. Navigate to where your game is saved or wherever you, if you've got a disk in then just navigate to your disk. Just playing it in windowed, windowed mode for now. I'll put it on full screen in a little minute. Just while I let it load up. Okay so oh wait I may have to actually load them settings again so we're a controller Load bindings, apply, okay, and then, oh, damn. okay, I put it in a full, full screen mode, and my controllers load up because the WASD is working, so let's just go ahead and start a new player, it doesn't really matter what you call this. I'm just asking you to save your um, profile. And uh, let's just load up a level here, Chinese. Oh yeah. And you can see there my mouse injector at the side. Mouse injector is turned off currently. All I have to do is press four at any time, basically, and that'll turn the mouse injector on. It's going to take a little minute for the game to load up here. There is one other problem with um, with this emulator and it's a little problem I ran into and I'm going to show you how to fix that as well afterwards. But let's turn the mouse injector on by pressing 4 and here you go, it's now working. Pick up easy, easy, so let's play a little bit. Oh yeah, ignore this slowdown, I think it's something to do with like, uh, the fact that I'm recording my screen because it doesn't happen normally. No, I'm not sure. I'm not, I think it's because I'm recording my screen. This is lagging. It doesn't normally behave like this, but you can see that the mouse injector is working. But there is a little problem with, uh, with this. Was and what it is is if you double click the uh, shoot button, it like keeps glitching in and out of the uh, full screen. And the way we fix that is if we go up to configure and go to um, I guess emulator settings and then down to GS window and there's this little checkbox here that says double click toggles full screen mode that I don't know why that's on by default and it's so annoying because like you'll be clicking like if you'd say you have a pistol and you want to keep shooting you'll just keep clicking and I'll just like zoom in now um, full screen so turn that off you can just turn it off anytime just hit apply and okay and that'll not do that anymore um, I don't know why my, um, I think it's something to do with the fact that I'm actually recording right now, but uh, my PS2 emulator is a little bit, there's something wrong with the, it kind of goes into slow motion mode, so, but that's that's it in a nutshell, that's how to get uh, Time Splitters 1 working. 
The dolphin emulator is slightly different. Slightly easier, probably. Uh, this is the file we'll get here, the dolphin file, and this is how we emulate time splitters 2 and 3. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to show you 3 running. So go ahead and now let's open up dolphin. Um, it, mouse injector won't automatically open up in this, and we have to open it at a certain time um, once the game's loaded up. So just go ahead and navigate to where your game is saved, first of all. And I think this will set up a little bit better. I think the Dolphin emulator in general is just a much better emulator. And I can see why Carnivorous has decided to use the Dolphin for Time Splitters 2 and 3. Alright, so... Go ahead and put it on the widescreen, why not? So the way that we, instead of loading the profile like we did in the PlayStation 2 emulator, we go down to the memory card and Carnivorous has set up this um, useful little uh, profile that's called Mouse WASD. Um, so he just went ahead and set up our settings for us, which is good, so just load that. And it's at this point where you want to um, start the mouse injector. So click on the mouse injector and we have the same little prompt where you, the read me bit, so just press control zero. Now a few more settings on the mouse injector for the dolphin as well, you can ch change the sensitivity, the crosshair movement, you can invert the pitch, um, but I don't want to do any of that. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and press F4 now, just to well turn it on. And I'm also going to go full screen, so I'm just going to hit alt and enter. The arcade mode was so much fun. Um, it was a bit like Perfect Dark, uh, let's see, I'll open up here, where you could just set whatever settings you want it, put whatever bots on you want it, um, any weapons on, and all the teams and stuff like that, so there was really, it was quite unlimited the amount of things you could do, um, but for handiness, so I don't have to set anything up, there was also actually some preset things that uh, the developers put in there that you could actually work your way through a league. Which kind of reminded me of um, Unreal Tournament actually would have all these like preset online but obviously offline things that you could just play against the bots which was really cool. Um, I'll load one of them up here just to show you guys what a bit like what it was like but there were so many different game types and things like that and uh, the game also had a great story too I'm just not going to load that because uh, there's like cutscenes and stuff and this will just get straight in the action just kind of show you what it was like. And uh, the dolphin's really good. I mean, the quality and the uh, the graphics are much better than what you would find on, like, say, the original GameCube or anything like that. But it's not perfect in that there are some. There's a little bit of screen tear going on. I've noticed. I don't know how much of that's being picked up uh, in my recording, but uh, definitely some some minor things. And I just think that. An official release would be really awesome, and I just would love to. I know whenever Perfect Dark got an official release, there was just loads of. There's a great community went back and played it. Lots of um, Goldeneye fans and stuff like that. So hopefully, if Time Players get that, we get the same thing. And I know that this uh, arcade league is what everyone would play today. Um, even though it did have co-op and stuff like that as well, I just think that. There'll be a lot of fun to be had in this mode. There's even a map maker as well, and just so much content. And there's even like a kind of zombie mode. Like I'll, I'll this footage I showed at the start. Um, I'll switch to some of that footage now. So this was pre this game type here is pretty much like COD Zombies before COD Zombies was even a thing. We just have waves of zombies coming out. And I think there was like a three or four challenges. Um, and that's been in the Time Splitter series for quite a while. And I think I certainly remember it in two. I can't say if it was definitely in one because I haven't played it in so long. And I want to go back and start playing this. So, um, but before I do that, I thought I would share this video with you, and then I'm going to go and probably play this over Christmas and stuff. And I just want to revisit Time Splitters in general. So this is going to make things so much easier. So I hope this helped you. Um, if nothing else, I hope it even just gave you a heads up. Um, Thanks Carnivorous for all the hard work. I've I have to say this has really been easy to use and I haven't had any I haven't found any problems with it at all. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. I hope 
this video helps and I hope you get to go and play sometimes first because I know I'm going to. Alright, see you there guys.